Hey everyone, Dr. Shea here from The Dentalist and welcome to chapter 18, which is hydrocolloid impression materials. Before we begin, if you feel like you're just memorizing dental materials without truly understanding it, I invite you to join my one-on-one -on -one coaching program where we'll cover everything in depth with exam strategies. Sign up using the link in the description or book a free call if you have questions. Also, make sure to join the Dentalist Gold email list for exclusive notes and updates. Now let's get into it. So what are hydrocolloids? Hydrocolloids are elastic water-based impression materials that exist as a colloidal system, meaning they contain dispersed phase, which has very small particles like gels, and the dispersion medium is usually water. They form a gel-like substance that can record fine details and are classified into two types mainly, reversible hydrocolloid, which is agar, and then there's irreversible hydrocolloid, which is alginate. Both are used to make elastic impressions, but they differ in composition, setting mechanism, accuracy, and of course, the clinical application. So we'll talk about reversible hydrocolloid first, which is agar. Agar is reversible hydrocolloid that sets by physical change. It softens when heated and gels when cooled. The composition includes agar colloid, which is 12 to 15 percent, and then borates, which strengthens the material. There's potassium sulfate, which improves the cast hardness, and water, 80 to 85 percent of water is present, uh, along with fillers and preservatives. The properties of agar is that they are reversible, so uh, they have a reversible setting property and can be reused by heating and cooling. It is hydrophilic, which means it flows well in moist environments, and then it has excellent surface detail reproduction. It has poor dimensional stability, so therefore it must be poured immediately. Because it loves water, it has high accuracy, especially in moist fields due to hydrophilicity. The manipulation of agar requires a special three-chambered conditioning unit, which involves liquefying chamber, um, which is around 100 degrees, and that is basically to convert gel into sol. The next chamber is storage chamber, which has around 60 to 70 degrees of temperature, and it maintains the material in sol state until its use. Tempering chamber, um, basically around 45 to 50 degrees, and that brings the material to a comfortable temperature for intraoral use. Agar is loaded into special water-cooled trays, and once seated in the mouth, the tray circulates cold water to set the material into a gel. Consistency types include low consistency, which is syringe type, used around margins and uh, usually for fine details. Then there's high consistency, which is also called tray type. It provides bulk and support. Then there's medium consistency, which is used in moderate flow and bulk. Both are basically required. The clinical use of agar, um, crown and bridge impressions in older systems, not really used right now. And oh, it's also used to duplicate models in the lab. It is technique sensitive, requires special water cooling trays and conditioning unit. Therefore, it's not commonly used today when we have elastomers. Now, irreversible hydrocolloid, which is alginate, um, it is basically an irreversible hydrocolloid that sets by chemical reaction, and once set, it cannot revert to sol. The composition, according to our uh, reference book, McCabe, includes that um, alginate has sodium or potassium alginate that forms gel with calcium. Calcium sulfate reactor is also present, which provides the calcium. And then it has trisodium phosphate retarder, which delays the setting time. And then there's diatomaceous earth filler that adds bulk and strength to the material. Zinc oxide basically controls the setting rate in alginate. And then there's flavor, color, antimicrobials for handling and storage. The setting reaction of alginate includes sodium alginate reacting to calcium sulfate, and that forms calcium alginate, which is the gel. 
and um, sodium sulfate would be there as a byproduct. And then properties of uh, alginate includes that it is hydrophilic, works well in the wet fields, and then it has fast setting um, reaction, well, about one to four minutes. It varies with water temperature. And it is elastic and can be removed from undercuts. It has low tear resistance, uh, which may tear in thin sections. Poor dimensional stability is also a property of alginate, and uh, that happens by losing water, which is called as cinerysis, or by absorbing water, which is called as imbibition. So alginate must be poured within 10 to 15 minutes of the impression taking process. The manipulation tips include use of correct powder water ratio, and it is supposed to be mixed for 45 to 60 seconds. The tray should be seated in one smooth motion. Um, after the impression is taken, it should be rinsed and disinfected after removal. You can pause and look at this comparison table that compares the properties and everything about agar and alginate. Take a good look, pause, take a screenshot, and if you want to recall it, use this table. I'm sure it will help you. Okay, now moving on to the common exam questions. First question would be, what is the setting reaction of alginate? So the setting reaction of alginate is the chemical reaction between sodium alginate and calcium sulfate. Next question is, why must alginate be poured quickly? Because it undergoes cinerysis, which is losing water, and imbibation, which is absorbing water. Therefore, it's dimensionally unstable. That's why it needs to be poured quickly. Next question, what equipment is needed for a gar manipulation? The answer is three compartment water bath. Remember, three chambers. Next one is which hydrocolloid can be reused? Is it a gar or alginate? I want you guys to tell me in the comments. What are the three chambers in the agar conditioning unit? It's liquefying, storage, and tempering. I want you guys to recall the temperatures of each of these chambers and write them down in the comments so that you keep them in your mind. So to summarize what we did today, we did hydrocolloids. Uh, we learned that hydrocolloids are water-based elastic impression materials. Agar is reversible. It requires special equipment and has excellent accuracy. Alginate is irreversible. It is easy to use, ideal for preliminaries, but must be poured quickly. Both are hydrophilic. Remember, both are hydrophilic, but have poor dimensional stability. Agar comes in different consistencies and requires a three-chambered water bath system. Now, if you want complete mastery of this subject with full explanations and exam strategy, I would love to work with you inside my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. Just sign up using the link in the description and I will see you on the other side. You can also book a free call to ask questions that you might have. And don't forget to join the gold email list for detailed PDF notes and practice material that I've prepared for you. Please like this video if it helped you. Subscribe to stay on track with every chapter that I'm uploading. That's it for today, my friends. I will see you in the next one. Take care till we meet again.